So, do you plan on putting the blower on the ZR1? Let's talk about that. So, if you go to my video and you go to the comments, I think people are under the impression that this thing's going to be an A. Um, someone said, uh, da, 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 can't wait to see this car done. I'm glad. Most of them are positive. But someone said GM body control module. Okay, this is good. I'll have to read some of these comments to make sure that the body control module and everything be good. So, tubular K member. We'll talk about that. Somebody said, this is a waste of money. You're stupid. Somewhere in there. Again, most of these guys are positive. Very positive. And again, the people that watch are fans and, 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 and uh, supporters. And, you know, 3,600 views is really good for not even a day on this situation. Now, obviously, a lot of people saw this and, you know, said, hey, uh, tubular K member, dry sump, this and this and that. Understand, guys, this car is going to be supercharged. I don't understand why people think that I wouldn't supercharge this. You know what I mean? Like, people, did you guys think I was going to put an NA Coyote motor in the Corvette? Like, is that... I hope you guys understand. This is getting a 2650. I had the option of getting a Whipple front feed, the, the, the blower that went sevens in the black bean. But let's be honest. And I'm going to be 100% honest, honest about this. I don't want to give Whipple a fucking second of airtime on this channel. And I know you guys are like, why not? Plain and simple. I don't like how they move. I don't like how they push shit. I don't like how they literally misinform a lot of people. So, you know, there's certain people that I want to support. I don't dislike them. I just don't want them on my channel. Okay? Because I just don't... I don't want part of it. I'm a 2650 TVS 2300 guy. I've always been that from since the uh, black car, since the uh, Fairmont has been 870s with a Edelbrock 2650. And most recently, uh, the GT500 went from a Whipple 4.5 to a 2650. And it made pretty damn close to the horsepower. So I'm like, I don't need anything above and beyond that. So a lot of people are probably under the impression that the Z01 is not going to get uh, supercharged. It is absolutely going to get supercharged. This car will not start without a supercharger on top of it. The problem is deciding on which one. I'm not going to go 2.3. I'm going to go 2650. Which 2650? We have the E-Force. We have the Roush front feed, which will never happen. I don't think I can get my hands on the latest and greatest stuff. We have the rear feed 2650. So there are a lot of options that I can go with out there. Um, but I'll exercise some of those options once it becomes more clear. Again, the moment I put a bell housing on this thing and everything fits, then it's time to party. It's, it's literally time to party. I am literally motor mounts. And start slamming wires in this thing and, you know, coolant system and all that stuff, which I don't think is a big issue. Once you start paring down the harness, and again, you C6 guys would know more than I would. Once I undid all the engine harness stuff from the computer, and again, I had to remove the fender. If you saw the video, I had to remove the fender to access the computer. Good job. Good job there, Chevy. Fucking computer in the fender. Luckily, it wasn't that much of a pain to take out, but... Uh, once I t did that, took the tank off, now I have some room. I ran the harness under the car, and now I have room to work with. But the problem is going to be, still, the fitment of the oil pan. It's either going to have to be a custom oil pan, or some of you... Yes, yeah, someone said the Predator blower. I understand. There's the Predator blower, there's the E-Force, there's the Odin, which I'll never I'll never put the, the VMP version of that shit on there. Fuck no, never. Um, now, if Maggie did their own thing, because it is a Magnuson blower, let's be honest... That'd be even better, but I don't think I can get their latest and greatest shit on the car because I don't even think it's available. But I'd love to be able to work with somebody. But again, that is still up in the air. But the other solution, believe it or not, because once you start typing tubular K member for a C6, you come up with some stuff. Uh, TRZ Motorsports. TRZ let me see, TRZ, TRZ, uh, Motorsports. This is going to, people are like, why don't you just get another K-member? Well, I'd rather get a custom 
oil pan than a K member. So we're gonna look for, let's look together because TRZ makes some badass stuff. Um, suspend general chassis suspension, general chassis. Does it give you an option for uh, C6? No, no, no. Does it give you a search bar? Uh, C6. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Shop TRZ. Here we go, right here. <clears throat> this is the problem with, you know, because it's not very common. It's insanely expensive. And this is race car shit only. This is if you're going to make your C6 a complete race car. They sell a C5, C6 Corvette Outlaw front suspension, $3,700. You want to upgrade the motor pads? Sure. You want to upgrade to a bill aluminum spindle? Sure. And then you still have to get your set of race brakes on this situation because you cannot use the stock ceramic brakes because of the spindle stuff. So they make stuff for it, but it is ridiculously expensive. Now, I wish I could just buy this and incorporate all the stock stuff. But apparently you cannot, and there's a bunch of room. Like apparently you have a bunch of room in there. So I think it's better to make a custom oil pan than to buy a 30 something hundred dollar K member for the thing, okay? Now, the moment that happens, fuel system. That's the other thing. The fuel system is something that I, got, I really gotta think about because after watching um, a YouTuber's video on how the fuel tanks work, how they're, they can come off on the side, but there's a big tube in the front that brings them together. It made me realize that I can tap into the bottom of the tank, but the problem with tapping into the bottom of the tanks is that the fittings are always loose. So it's almost better to have a module in there that pumps through the um, pumps through the stock stuff. But I think it's going to have to be like a four innovation fuel system. But I think I can get away with the stock stuff if it turns on. That's the other thing. If I key on, will the pump turn on or does the computer and everything have to be connected still for the fuel pump to actually go on because it is a variable fuel pump. It can go high, low, depending on uh, demand. So if the computer is not connected, will the pump pump? Can I hotwire the pump on full time? Who knows? All that stuff has yet to be figured out. So I think a, a, a different oil pan is my best bet. The problem is it has to be so shallow towards the front of the motor and it has to have the sump so far back that it's going to be pretty difficult. Now, people say, why not go dry sump? So this is the issue. Peterson oil slash uh, fuel pump. These are the type of pumps that are needed in order for you to run a dry sump. Now, I think the LS9 has an incorporated um, pump in the tank that allows, you know, the, the mechanism to, to, you know, pump oil through the engine and it is dry slump. But if you don't have that and you go with an aftermarket uh, fuel pump, you need a belt driven fuel pump and it's fuel slash oil. This has a fuel side and an oil side and it's going to be, you know, 1500 bucks. Now, forget that. That's just the pump. Now we're talking about mounting it. Now we're talking about tanks. Now we're talking about bracketry. Now we're talking about lines. Understand, guys, it is not cheap. And now I don't want to have this situation. Now I could do, because I'm a pump guy, I know 100% I can probably incorporate an electric oil pump in the situation, but that's going to be a little more integrated and you're going to have to have fail safe set up in such a way that if, if the um, fuel pressure goes under a certain amount, like the engine shuts off. So that's going to be more involved. Again, it's better just to leave it wet sump and get yourself a super custom uh, tank if you have to. If I have to take my Canton oil pan to a fabricator and say, this is what I need, and maybe bring the capacity down a little bit, but maybe a, a half a quart or a quart, but have it fit. And I think I can put it in from under the car. I think that's also the key. Put it in from under the car, I think that would work. 